Hey, my Christian friends, are you ready for this? I had a video ready to go, and so as it happens to me other times, the Lord gave me insight. All glory to Him. I'm about to drop a huge revelation on you that's going to just make you fall out of your seat. And we're going to go ahead and dig right into it. I have an awful lot to go through. Huge lunar uh, total solar eclipse tonight, and science are calling it the last solar eclipse that will ever matter to them to study to see to go on with their with their research it's not it's going to be insignificant after this this is like the last solar eclipse that's important to astronomy and that's a huge thing it's going to be four minutes and 33 seconds long not 431 432 434 433 let's go to the bible this is huge number four in the bible symbolizes god setting all things in order you got that all things in order the rapture Snatching his bride away, bringing in the tribulation, the great tribulation, ending the age of the Gentiles, beginning the age of the Jews, the 70th week of Daniel. Okay, you getting this? Number four in the Bible comprises of two numbers, three and one, which denotes what comes next to, to the revelation of the Almighty and the Trinity. It also denotes the creations made by God, all things that you see around you, the four great elements, earth, fire, air, and water, the four regions of earth. East, west, west, north, south, the four divisions of day, morning, evening, noon, midnight. And nearing, uh, it, get closer we get to midnight is, is, a, is a huge rapture sign. Um, the four corners of the earth where Christ is going to snatch away his bride from. Are you getting all this stuff? This is all humongous. In a year, there are four seasons, summer, autumn, spring, and winter. That also ties into rapture big time. All this does. Four sides of a square. And four major variations of the moon. <clears throat> These are all things that God created, were followed by the fifth and sixth day that marked marked people on the planet and creatures that have life. One of the verses of the Bible talks about the river of life parted into four heads. And again, that's gonna be something that Christians are going to be partaking of in heaven after the imminent rapture. Huge stuff. We get our new bodies, and those who are dead in Christ as well. This <laughs> this is exciting me big time. It also, number four, denotes division. Huge division in the world right now. There'd be a monster division when the, when the bride is raptured and the world is here for seven years of, of, of great tribulation. And there'd be a huge division of the Antichrist and those who refuse to mark of the beast. You're getting all this stuff? It's also also marks completeness, wholeness, okay? Completeness of the age of the Gentiles. And that's it. And then we begin the final age of the Jews. This is just amazing stuff, my friends. There are also four Gospels in the Bible. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. The throne of God is surrounded by four beasts. They signify the worth of the number four. The shape of the New Jerusalem is of a square with the entire side equal. And the high priest's breastplate is also four square. There are four rows with three stones each with the, with the names of the twelve tribes of Israel in the walls of the New Jerusalem. There are four heads of the animal creations, the lion, the, the lion, the beast, and the ox, the tame beast. Another one of the eagle, the birds, the fourth is a man, the head of all. The prophecy mentioned the names of four kings of Persia at the time of the fall, the Medes and the Persians, though there were many others too. In Revelation 7, 1, there's mention of the four angels that stand at the four corners of the earth and release four wings of annihilation with complete unstinting in its purpose. There's also a fourfold description of the generations of the sons of Noah in Genesis 10 that goes as lands, tongues, nations, families. And there are four great prophetic world powers that are divided. Three plus one in Revelation. One stands out, the others uh, out of the others, and, the other, and, and donated and denoted the contrast to the rest of the three world powers. The initial three feral beasts are named, the lion, the bear, and the leopard. The fourth is not named, but described. The fourth book of the Holy Bible is Numbers. It's also known as Wilderness. The Jews are going to be going through the wilderness. They've been going through the wilderness for the last 70 years. They're finally going to find Jesus Christ, their Messiah, and come out of the wilderness. It's, it's twofold. It's a two-edged sword. It's amazing. It speaks about the pilgrimage of mankind, the earth, the wilderness, compared to heaven. And the life and death of Jesus Christ are also provided. Uh, presented by fourfold record. You get this stuff? This is amazing. Christ is the one coming back to snatch his bride away and get us out of here. <clears throat> that was the four minute mark of the of the um, eclipse. Now it's 33 seconds as well. Here's 30, 33. 
Number 33 is the promise or the promises of God. The 33rd time Noah's name is used in scripture is when God makes a special covenant or promise with him, the rainbow covenant, the ark. We're going to be leaving in the ark in the rapture soon. You getting this? The eternal promises to not destroy the entire world again with the flood and seals his pledge with the sign of the rainbow. The 33rd time Abraham's name is used in the Bible is when Isaac, the, the, the child of promise, is born to him when he's 99 years old. Again, the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob covenant is what's going to be center stage after the age of the Gentiles and the rapture happens in the tribulation, great tribulation, the age of the Jews. This is all time. The Abrahamic covenant is going to be center stage in the whole world. You getting this? 33 also derives some of its meaning from the total number of three, of times three or third used in the book of Revelation. Because it's a product of, of three times, 11, it represents God's judgment, okay? Judgment, tribulation, great tribulation. You getting all this? Thus, Revelation illustrates God's complete final judgment of the world, which is ultimately accomplished in the final three and one half years. And again, we're having leading up to the second coming of Jesus Christ to get that which happens after the rapture at the end of the tribulation. You getting all this? And Jesus Christ, who, by the way, was 33 year old when he was crucified, okay? Back to that in a second. So this is all coming up to the final judgment of the world. The rapture happens. The final judgment of the world is the tribulation and great tribulation. Follow by Armageddon. You get all this? is amazing. And again, Christ was 33 when he was crucified. 33 is considered by science to be the perfect age for all human beings, bodies and minds. It never gets better than that. Before 33, it only gets worse after 33. We'll be raptured soon, and I believe have 33-year-old bodies and minds made perfect by God to be like Christ, who's coming back for us. Are you getting this? This is amazing. Now, again, Israel's always a key to everything. So let's go back in time, shall we? 70 years ago, we had another <coughs> totally lunar eclipse. And it happened on November 1st. It was six months after Israel's rebirth. A total eclipse time was 5.59.18, okay? Now, first of all, the number six, it was six months after Israel's rebirth. The number six a Hebrew slave was to serve six years and be released in the seventh year. In 1941, Hitler's persecution of the Jews began in earnest. They were released in the seventh year to form Israel, reform Israel in 1948. And again, the seven, last 70 years, we've been, we've been in the last days of the age of the Gentiles, soon to be the seventh week of Daniel, Tribulation, great tribulation, and again, this 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 eclipse was 70 years before and 70 years after. Now we're having another one, which is was thought to be the final eclipse of urgency importance. Are you getting this stuff, man? It's amazing. You can't make this stuff up. 70 years later, we had this eclipse. 70 in the Bible has a sacred meaning. It's made up of the factors of two perfect numbers, seven representing perfection and 10 representing completeness in God's law. So we've got perfection. The, 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 the bride of Christ will, will get perfect bodies in the air after the dead in Christ arise and get perfect bodies. Then we are alive, we'll get perfect bodies. It's perfection. And then completeness, completeness of, of the age of the Gentiles and the age of the Jews is getting ready to start the tribulation. Are you getting this? This blows me away. It blows my mind, man. And that's hard to do. Next, it symbolizes perfect spiritual order carried out with all power. It can also represent a period of judgment. You get in that, the tribulation, the great tribulation. Ancient Israel spent a total of 70 years in captivity in Babylon. And now they're getting ready. They've been, it's been 70 years. They had a new nation again after they were in captivity for the seven years with, with Hitler uh, trying to kill them all. And now they're going to be coming out and learning Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And the 70th, again, at number 70th week of Daniel, the seven year tribulation, a multiple of 70. Amazing, my friends. 70 is also especially connected with Jerusalem. The city kept 70 years of Sabbath, and while Judah was in Babylonian captivity, and again, they, they're getting ready to be out. They, they, they became a nation again, and now they're getting ready to know Jesus. Seventy sevens, 490 years, were determined upon Jerusalem for it to complete its transgressions again. That 490 years, we're looking at that last 70, that last seven weeks to make it perfect. That's the seventh week of Daniel. Happens right after the rapture, and this eclipse is coming up today. Are you getting this? Woo! This is some amazing stuff, man. This is mind-blowing to the 10th power. For Jerusalem to, com to complete its transgressions, the 70 years, series book of Daniel about to begin, to make an end for sins and everlasting righteousness to enter into it. They learn about Jesus Christ. They become righteous. They, 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 they fill the earth in, in the millennium and repopulate the earth. And they spend, and the ones who, the ones who stay with Jesus Christ reign with him forever and, and live with him forever. In the, uh, in the in the in the in eternity, 
this is amazing. Amazing. Now, the number five in the Bible is, we're looking at now, the five, eclipse, eclipse being five, 59, 18. Number five in the Bible is significant because it, it his God's creation in the man, man has five fingers, has, has five senses, five toes. It's the number of God's grace, number five. There are five great mysteries, the Father, the Son, the Spirit, creation, and redemption, okay? Creation and redemption. God's getting ready through Jesus Christ to redeem redemption, the bride of Christ, the, the dead in Christ and the living in Christ, redeem us and take us up to heaven, which was the beginning of creation. You get in this pre-creation, heaven was there. Redeem us and we'll be with the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amazing, <laughs> amazing stuff. Now, five minutes, 59 seconds, 59 seconds. Number 59 in the Bible, sin and judgment. This, this eclipse is happening when God is getting ready to judge the world for all of its sin in the tribulation, great tribulation, after snatching his bride away, the bride of Christ before that. Uh, this, this man, wow. And lastly, point 18, the 18th, 559, 18. Number 18, God freed Israel from bondage. He's going to take Israel away from believing the old Torah, the old Jewish books of the Bible, and bring them into Jesus Christ, his only son, to be their Lord and Savior, to be part of his, in his bosom. Just, I can't say anything else. That's it. Jesus Christ is our only hope, my friends. The rapture is upon us. Every Christian out there needs to share this video and ask all their Christian friends to share, have their Christian friends share, have their Christian friends share. Because I constantly get censored on YouTube, constantly on Facebook. We need to get this video out to everybody on planet Earth we possibly can, Christian and non-Christian, and let them know. You have to work overtime to get this out, my friends. It's very, very, very important, extremely important to get it out. Jesus Christ is our only hope. If you've never been saved, you're backslidden. Pray the prayer. Do the six steps I have in the box below video. No one's guaranteed the next day, hour, minute, or second of your life. If you'd like prayer for anything, contact me. I pray for you every day without fail. True Christians, wish to pray for the lost daily. It's your job. If you're not doing it, do it now. If you are, great. And look up. Our dips and draweth and I, we fly soon. May God bless you. Please get right with the Lord. Please share this video. Show Jesus Christ you care. Share and get ready. We are just so close to leaving this wicked world. The true bride of Christ is. And those who are left behind, it's going to be the time for the God to deal with the Jews. But the Gentiles, we had our time the last 2,000 years, and the Gentiles are going to suffer immensely who are left behind. Don't go through that. Find Jesus Christ now before your time runs out. May God bless you all. And again, please, please share. Have your friends share. Your friends' friends share. Get the word out. May God bless you. We fly soon. Bye.